Okay, so in this video, we're going to be converting the project that we've created till now into Swift 3. I realize that since one day we're going to have to convert to that, we might as well do it now. It does require a few steps, though it's not that complicated, but I'll guide you over it one by one. And we should have a working project by the end of it. As always, the starter project and the completed project are available on GitHub and the links for the same are given in the description. The only thing that you'll require for this video is Xcode 8 which is now readily available from the App Store. Before we head into Xcode, let's start with the pod files. We need to start by updating the pod files that we had installed earlier. So let's open up our pod file. So we just cd into our project directory. There we just nano into our pod file and we can see that we had installed Firebase and its dependencies. All we need to do is we need to just run pod update. This updates all our Firebase dependencies to allow us to work with Xcode 8 and with the latest Swift 3 syntax. Now let's open up our project in Xcode. The moment we open it up, we see this alert which says convert to current Swift syntax. So let's click on convert. It asks us whether we want to convert it to Swift 3 or Swift 2.3. We're going to take the plunge and go directly with Swift 3 now. What we're also going to do is we're going to select these frameworks as well and click on next. It's going to give us a preview of all the files after it's finished converting it. So in front of us we have the app delegate. As you can see one of the changes is that when you call a function without the first parameter you would write it as a normal function but now when you want to call a function without naming the first parameter you need to put an underscore before that. It's the same for all the functions like here for the did tab start tweeting. We don't write sender when we call the function so it's put an underscore before that. In the Firebase uh, code we can see that instead of making it observe single event of type and then putting the type in the value, it just made it observe single event and off goes inside. Similarly lowercase string is now lowercase, perform with segue has now split up into perform and with segue with identifier goes inside the bracket and dismiss view controller animated has become dismiss so it's swift 3 has cut out a lot of the verbosity that was there in the language and made it a lot clearer and streamlined we have the same thing with the home view controller also now for the index path we don't need to call ns index path Number of sections, we don't need to say number of sections in table view and then table view again, in goes inside the bracket. This as index path we'll have to remove when we edit the code because it's not required anymore. UI color dot black color is not required anymore. It can just be UI color dot black. Scale aspect fit used to be with a capital S. Now it's only going to be with a small s. And like user interaction enabled is now become is user interaction enabled which makes it clearer according to the people who wrote the language coming to the home table view public classes are now called open classes ns data is no longer required instead you can just run a try block and say data contents of url instead of ns url and get the url data directly makes it a lot more streamlined not mixing up ns data along with data now it's more sounds more like swift Similarly, the similar things have been changed here. Dismiss view controller, observe single event, self dot perform segue. In the mu view controller, again, observe single event of type has become observe single event. And also dot value is now in small case instead of uh, having a capital V. And instantiate view controller with identifiers, instantiate view controller with identifiers gone inside. Similarly with this. So most of the changes are made to make the language a lot more clearer which I think is a good thing and it's not going to break a lot of things. Like you see UI light color, gray color is now just light gray. Hidden is now is hidden. CG rect value becomes CG rect value without the function parenthesis. Here put data becomes put and not put data.
similarly enabled is is enabled now and add auth state did change listeners now add state did change listener a lot of this code has not exactly been updated very well on the firebase uh, documentation yet and the examples are not exactly updated like they should be so we'll go through whatever changes we need to make to try and make this work so we'll just save this out as always to begin with you need to copy the google service info.plist file into your project folder the instructions for this are given along with the startup project on my github page once we've got the google service info.plist file we can start so let's just try and build this project first we should surely get an error as you can see we've got a couple of errors and it says build failed so let's start with the first one as you can see we've said var logged in user is equal to any object this is not no longer allowed we need to do it the exact swift way which is just put a colon and say any object and put a question mark after that for an optional the next error that we've got is the similar thing for this variable so let's do this for all the variables this is also going to become any object with a question mark. Come down. CG float will also not be equal to it will have a colon and does not require the parenthesis anymore. Locked in user will also be in any object without the parenthesis. Coming further down. If you remember we had put in this code to catch the invalid email address error this has been fixed by firebase now so we can get rid of this message here it automatically just displays the invalid email address if it catches that error let's just try and build this again so the errors that we had corrected are gone but we still have some more variables that we need to redeclare so let's get the variables first in the home view controller we can see here okay the logged in user let's just change this also and the logged in user data building this again let's see seems like we've got a hold of all the variables now now let's start with the other part of it let's come to the me view controller and select this error it says type any has no subscript members so basically earlier what we were doing is we were getting the data from our node and it was of type fir data snapshot and we were directly just extracting the values and putting the data and showing it but now swift needs to be sure what type that data is so we can't directly just extract the values from it so for this what we do is we'll say let snapshot equal to snapshot dot value and we'd force downcast it we know it has a string as the property name and after that we'll say any object to it the value of that can be any object then what we'll do is instead of snapshot dot value we'll just say snapshot and put in the name in the brackets downcast that as a string again here we'll say snapshot handle downcast that as a string and similarly for the rest just remove value about remove this and let's build this so as you can see once you converted the snapshot to a dictionary Swift has no problem with us extracting the values. Let's come to the next error. It says heterogeneous collection literal could only be inferred to as string any. So basically what it's saying is that there's only one thing that this can be converted to, which is that the first parameter is of type string and the second parameter is of type any. So you must insert that to indicate that it's being downcast to that exactly. It can't be left ambiguous. So that's what we're doing. We'll just put that in. Similarly for this, we'll say as string any. And if we build this, the error should go away. 
So no longer you, can you leave things ambiguous for Swift to interpret on its own. You need to explicitly declare the type of uh, data that Swift is working with. So now let's come to the next error, which says index path is not convertible to NS index path. So let's get rid of NS index path. And just make this index path dot row. And let's build this out. As you can see, even after we've corrected that, the NS index path error is gone. But another error has come up, which says self dot tweets dot count. It says ambiguous reference to member count. This was working perfectly before in the earlier version of Swift. So let's see what we have to do here. Basically here again, we're getting the snapshot and we're directly appending the snapshot to the tweets array. We cannot basically put a count method to an any object anymore. It has to be of type NS dictionary or NS array. So let's convert this and say var tweets is equal to an array of NS dictionary. And since we're sure it's going to be only an NS dictionary that will be added to the tweet, so we'll remove the question mark to make it mandatory. Now coming here, if you build this, it'll tell us that it cannot convert value of type fir data snapshot to expected argument type NS dictionary. So let's do that ourselves. We'll say snapshot dot value, force downcast that to an NS dictionary. If you build this, we should see that error go away. Coming down, the error of the count value is also gone, but it says cannot force unwrap value of non-optional type NS dictionary. Since we've converted it into a dictionary, we can get rid of value from all of these. And since it's non-optional, we don't need an exclamation mark. And let's build this out. And we no longer need to put two equal to is here. Is this not equal to nil? Build this out and that's okay. It's working now. Now, if you come down here, we have another error that's come up here, which has ambiguous reference to member value for animated key. The same thing we have to do for the logged in user data. Over here, it says of type any object. Let's make this of type NS dictionary. And here, self.logged in user data will be snapshot.value as NS dictionary. And since some values can be nil, we'll just put that as an optional. Coming down here, we'll get rid of value and we'll uh, just leave the bracket with the parameter name. If you build this, the error should be gone. Now that we've corrected all the errors that had come, let's run this out. As we see, it looks like everything is working, but this home view does not turn up. What's happening is also, if you come here and check out the error log, it says failed to fetch default token error. This is an error that's being caused because the simulator in Xcode does not have access to the keychain directly. So let's enable that first. Come here to Twitter clone, go into capabilities and put on keychain sharing. Once you put this on, this error will be gone. But there's one more thing that we need to do to make it display. We need to come to the home view controller and we need to change the code here for child added. Basically earlier we used a forward slash and did this and it worked but now we basically have to put it under child to make it work. So that has to be child tweets node under that we need to go to the child which is the self dot logged in user dot uid and then observe the child added event. Now this will work. Let's run this. And there you see our home view controller is displaying perfectly. Now home view controller is displaying perfectly, but if you go to the new tweet and try and add a photo to the tweet, it will give you an error. That's because there are two privacy options that have been added, which are the photo library usage description and the camera usage description which needs to be added to our info.plis file. It'll basically give a prompt to the user saying that the app would like to use your photos or the app would like to access your camera and the user has to say 
yes or no and only then it can move forward so let's just add those in here click on this plus button here go under privacy and we'll put in camera and you can give a description here saying click a photograph for your tweet next we'll put in privacy privacy and select photo library usage description select photo from gallery also coming to the new tweet controller we need to firstly move the let row low res image data value that we had created we had kept this outside but if the user does not add an image it will give us an error so let's copy this and put this inside this one which is tweets tweet length is greater than zero and images is greater than zero and also put it inside else if num image is greater than zero so now it won't give an error if the user only puts in text also from iOS 10 onwards we need to force unwrap the user ID of the user over here otherwise it will get stored as an optional in our database let's run this out now Here we have the home view controller select an image it says see this brings up this option of would you like would like to access your photos allow or don't allow so you say okay select a photograph choose and then the image comes up and now you can click tweet and you'll see that the image and the tweet has come up so we finally got our app to be working using Swift 3. I know it's been a little hard and we had to make quite a few changes, but it'll be worth it because from now on, we'll only concentrate on Swift 3 and build our application using Swift 3 only. I promise you that the next videos will be coming up much faster than this one came up and we'll quickly finish up this application. I hope you guys like this and please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.